My name is Carlos. I'm a robot operator. I started out in sanitation. What I would tell those uh, that are interested in, in working for National Beef, sky's the limit here. People are friendly. If you're a go-getter, you're going to accomplish it. And this is the place to do it. Looking for a job with an opportunity to grow? See Carlos' story and apply now at nationalbeef.com slash careers or call us at 419-257-5535. Inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, Mint Mobile has given you a much-needed break on your wireless bill. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Order today at mintmobile.com slash gam. It was the most verbose possible way of saying live, laugh, love is what it was. Yes. Like, I feel like if I'd have skipped this scene and then you asked me to, like, give a book report presentation on it with me not having seen it. Yeah. I'd have been able to guess this verbatim. Like, you light nailed it. is <laughs> true, yeah. not darkness, um, enlightenment, heart, true self, truth. You could put this scene together with the responses everyone's ever given to a direct question on Be Reasonable, so I feel like that's kind yeah. of cheating. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because otherwise we wouldn't. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath is off this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am fantastic, Noah, and I'm pleased to say I am not the reborn Buddha. Oh, <laughs> what a coincidence. And also, of course, joining us from one ocean to my east-northeast is the host of Be Reasonable, the co-host of Skeptics with a K and the editor of the Skeptic Magazine, the good one, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back, sir. Hey, guys. Great to be here. I am confused. Now, I don't know if that's confused because I'm have i very busy at the moment. There's a lot of stress going on. We've got a big event coming up. So I don't know if that is what's confusing me, but I sat through two hours of this movie and I I, I don't know what has happened to my life to get to this point. It is, <laughs> I've no, and I don't know what my life has been since then. This movie has materially affected my ability to correctly understand the world around me. That's how impactful this movie is. Your sliding doors moment. It is an <laughs> existential crisis of a movie. Yeah, so... Oh, Oh, yeah. So tell us, Marsh, what existential crisis will we be breaking down today? Ah, so we watched The Rebirth of Buddha. It's the story of, I think, an aspiring young journalist mm -hmm. who sees ghosts and mm -hmm. can possibly sometimes predict the future. That's unclear. Mm -hmm. Who has to save all of Japan from an evil cult, a tsunami and possibly aliens. Mm -hmm. And so to do that, she lets her much older boyfriend groom her into joining a cult, but a good cult, so it's fine. Yes. It's, it's, it's happy science. It's happy science, so it's all <laughs> of that. It really yep. is. Isn't that always the way? We, we should emphasize that, like, these have never been particularly subtle movies, but this is the closest these animes have gotten to. You should join our cult. Yes. <laughs> Here's some literature. Right, right. 100%. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the full-on wackadoo craziness of the happy science cult, but you're sad not enough of it has been a direct vanity project <laughs> of their accountant ass-looking leader, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. Yeah, the good guy cult leader in this movie, and yes, that is a thing, was all but named like fucking Shmuyuho Shmokama. In a <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best of being the worst at? Oh, yeah. I'm going to take the easy one. Best Worst Australian. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> there is an Australian character in this movie and the accent, the accent, accent is so astonishingly bad. It's, it's basically me when I forget to pre-read the skits for this podcast and then I realize way too late that Eli's making me do an accent and right, I've got to try exactly. and just do it on the fly. It's basically <laughs> that. That's who this Australian character is. It's incredible. No, I just, when, I, when I, we came across this guy in the notes, I wrote... Hey, Marsh, did you do the accent work in this movie? You have to tell me if you did. It's like being a cop. You have to tell us, yeah. So I, I went with Best Worst Angels. They, the animation <laughs> isn't great through most of this film, but man, a bunch of angels show up at the end and make it look great. <laughs> make everything else about it look okay. These angels are so bad. 
they change animation style. Oh yeah. God, yes, yeah, yeah. They they bought some three D models and they were getting as much use out of them as they possibly could because they were not they were not cheap. Exactly. No, yeah. no. This movie came out in two thousand three or two thousand nine or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with best worst drawing of yourself. So mm-hmm. as we hinted, the protagonist of this movie is uh, Shmoryu Shmokama. And if you Google a picture of this dude <laughs> and then you see how he is represented in this movie, it is Tinder dating profile levels of dishonest. <laughs> 100%. He is catfishing us with this movie. Yes, this, this, right. this, yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, there's a lot of stay with me in the notes ahead. So we're going to take a quick break while you prepare yourself. We'll be back in a flash with all the undiluted insanity of the rebirth of Buddha. Hey, podcast listener. Did you know that only 22% of Americans speak a language other than English at home? Embarrassing. And in front of Michael Marshall, no less. That's right. But that's all right. We're prepared to forgive you and you can learn a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are a little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. It's true. Anna loves learning new languages, and so when Babbel became a sponsor, she started using it to brush up on her French and to get ready for our trip to Sweden. And here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. To get you started right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash awful. So get 55% off at babbel.com slash awful. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash awful. Rules and restrictions may apply. Babel, because your monolingualism is embarrassing us in front of Michael Marshall. All right, everyone, welcome to the first production meeting of The Rebirth of Buddha. Hooray! Wait, 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 wait a second. Why don't we have Japanese accents? Because some of us would like to keep our jobs, Marsh. Okay, yep, got it, fair enough. There you go. Anyway, today we are honored to be joined by the leader of our organization, Ryuho Akawa. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. So I was kind of saving this as a fun surprise, but since I, or rather a pretty direct representation of me, appears in the movie, I actually already had the animators work up a little something and uh, wanted to show it to you. Oh, I can't oh wait how to see wonderful. It. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. And here it is. Oh, <laughs> sorry. That's that's you. Yeah, yeah, that's me in the movie. Wow, they even got my hair. Oh, uh, you, you and the drawing both have hair. Yeah, that is that is true. Mm-hmm. And my chin, my chin. I was a little nervous, but they really nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Nailed it. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yes. So you know how I've given you all my worldly belongings because I believe that you're the reincarnated Buddha, Shiva, and the great spirit known as Yamu. Yamu, yeah, absolutely. Right. So believe me, when I say this is a bridge too far, I'm saying a lot here. You do not look like this picture. You look nothing like this picture. You look like a problematic drawing of a Komodo dragon. Mm. I've gotten Mm -hmm. that a lot. Okay. But I mean, guys, I'm also white in the drawing. So yeah, but that's still more realistic than how handsome you are. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this anime in an all-girls school, like most of the animes we've watched, I would guess. But um, that's that's where the similarity is going to end. Yeah, I was on the lookout for tentacles. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> not in this act, at least. So yeah, so so we're going to meet uh, Sayako, who she, she's our our protagonist, and she's having these visions in school of getting hit by a train, and and then gets in trouble for not paying attention in class. Yeah, even in her visions, it's a. She's got a very nonplussed reaction to an oncoming train. It's not like fear or terror. It's like, oh, train. Yeah. Which is not how I'd react to a train coming at me, even in a vision, I think. Right? No, I mean, if you've ever gotten on a Japanese train, Marsh, you know that getting hit by one is a lot more pleasant. So I I, I get it. (laughs) I had a lovely time with the Shinkansen. I want to have a bad word about them. (laughs) Okay. Marsh got squished into another person at 90 miles an hour and was like, (laughs) effective. I love this. This is good. (laughs) 
so after a class, she's talking to her friend about having this this vision. And of course, in classic happy science cult style, the subtitles don't match the dub, right? So I have to like spend 15 minutes screaming about that fucking with my uh, OCD. Yeah. Again, I, I know we've talked about this before when we've done these movies, but the question always comes up. Who is in contact with who in the process of <laughs> mm -hmm. making these movies, right? Because the animators aren't in touch with the voice actors who almost never know they're making a cult movie. The subtitle people aren't in touch with the voiceover people. It just seems like there needs to be a project manager for this thing. <laughs> Too much compartmentalization. Yeah. Thank you. I actually, I know what happened. It's that the this the original script of this film was translated from golden plates, but then someone didn't believe the translation, <laughs> confiscate the script, and then the right. subtitles yep. had to be yep. retranslated from those plates. <laughs> oh, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So yeah, so but Sayako has to rush off to finish her article about an actress that the movie is going to pretend matters but doesn't. Right. And the thing is, she's very very panicky about this article, but this article is the dullest article one could possibly ever imagine. Literally, her headline for the article is, actress expresses enthusiasm about her new show. It's like, yes. kid, this is not making the front page. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just can it now. Wait at least until she scabs and goes back on the air without a writer. <laughs> that's, now, right. that's a story you can come. Yeah, so, yeah, but we watch her write her article at length, and then from her, like, standing up and stretching and going, yep, got all that writing down, suddenly we get this incredibly cinematic title screen for the rebirth of Buddha. <laughs> yeah. You know how like usually these screens are preceded by like a fucking bone turning into a firearm or a car <laughs> exploding and Vin Diesel thinking his family is dead. She's just like, <laughs> good day of typing. The rebirth yes, of Buddha. Yes. <laughs> it is the, the wildest off tone transition at all. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Buddha. right. So, okay, so the next morning we meet her family having breakfast because, of course, put that on your fucking bingo card. <laughs> we meet Shunta, her little brother. Fuck yeah, this kid rocks. He's like a Pokemon antagonist and he will not take any of this universe-destroying movie seriously at any moment. <laughs> Even when he has a demonic goiter, it's pretty fucking crazy. We also, we meet her parents and, and there's this throwaway line where they're like, Hey, dad, are you losing weight? And he's like, oh, you know, working all these nights. It's going to turn out he's dying of cancer because atheism, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. When We don't spend a lot of time worrying about that, though. So no. it's just a very throwaway thing. Oh, yeah. The conclusion of that plot thread is so fucking fabulous. We'll, yeah. we'll get to it. Yeah. We will. We will. So, yeah, no, it, it actually just leaps in front of a train to its own death, which is what happens next in the movie. <laughs> right? The news comes up and they're, they're like, a very important reporter committed suicide by train last night at the such and such train station. Right. Yeah. And do they, would the news lead with the suicide of a reporter? Like it's leading with his death, like it's the death of Princess Diana or something. Yeah. Like it's on all the news. <laughs> He's just a guy who like a reporter who committed suicide. I don't think that would be the top story in all of Japan for the day. Right. Yeah. No. Next up in the news, the plot. Yeah. Yeah. So and and we, we get to the school like we she goes to school. We get to the school. All the kids are talking about the reporter suicide. Right. Because that's the big goss at the high school. Right, and she knew him, so when she walks in the room, they're like, we weren't talking about your friend Kelly himself, we were talking <laughs> about something else. Okay, this is such a great fucking moment. It was almost my best worst because we get to see what happens when happy science cult writers try to imagine, you know, natural stuff to have been talking about. And everybody's like, UFOs, the government's hiding something, the feds of Ponzi scheme, I've it. <laughs> what are teenage girls just sort of gossiping about? Probably UFOs. efficacy of vi ivermectin trials. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Know, the the failing Japanese economy <laughs> is high on the list of things to talk about for a 15-year-old schoolgirl. I did wonder at this point, because we already had the schoolgirl writing the story about the actress. She seemed to have, like she had all the posters of the actress on the wall. I thought, okay, this is going to be about her like having a crush on this actress. It's going to be her, like her coming of age story coming out of kind of understanding. So I thought, and then she starts talking, like looking at this suicide. And, okay, is this, is this movie going to be about an impressionable, psychic, possibly lesbian, aspiring journalist who cracks the case of a spate of suicides? Is that what this is going to be? And if not, can I pitch that premise somewhere? Because that's a film right there. Yeah, right, right. But yeah, but just in case you start thinking this is some kind of game o movie, they established that she has a boyfriend and also he is uh, in college and she's in high school. So in case you weren't uncomfortable, mm. um, that's going to be a plot line. Cool and awesome. 
Also, this movie definitely hedges its pedophile bets by being like, where in college and high school we choose not to say. Yep. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I didn't think this was going to change the sexuality of the movie. I thought, okay, she's got a boyfriend. All I'm saying is he's not an act three kind of boyfriend. He's very much an act one boyfriend. <laughs> right, yeah. And there'll be a journey going on. That's what I was predicting. It didn't go there, but that's no. what I was predicting. No. And also, so we establish here that she can also see smoke demons, right? Because she looks at one of her friends when they're talking about her boyfriend and she can see a smoke demon rising out of her going like, why don't I have a boyfriend, you lucky piece of shit? You know? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it that that demon has absolutely stolen the script from one of Eli's better help ads in that <laughs> yeah. just, the internal <laughs> negative monologue. All right. For sure. Yeah. I, but don't worry, like if you're confused about what those demons are, what they're doing, her powers to see them will matter incredibly little. Like yep. shockingly little for yeah, the rest absolutely. of the yeah. film. They'll disappear and never actually affect the plot as as far as I can tell. Yeah. So okay, so we cut to some boring history class later and we find out that she can also see the ghosts of history rising out of her textbooks so i wasn't sure that's what it was i it looked like you just see like black smoke floating around i thought oh she's got those little black floater things that you get in your eyes but like dialed up to 11 that's what <laughs> yeah, she's got going sure. just a really bad case and of there's yeah. just a lot of historical dead people in her classroom off to the side so <laughs> exactly yeah no i get it because this posits that like the books are full of the pain of the stuff we write in them because gosh, that would suck to be a little life. That's all I'm saying. Actually, that book is probably really gloomy on the shelf at every Barnes and Noble is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, the, the other thing that's so weird to me is that like everyone has a copy of the same book. So wouldn't we just hear the same Mons, the same ghost speaking from several different books at once. Why is it just hers that we're hearing? I don't, I don't know. All I was thinking was, if the things that we write can feel pain, we absolutely need to euthanize Eli's misspelled notes. Nothing with <laughs> the capacity to pain should have to suffer like that. So yeah, but she freaks out and she rushes to the nurse's office and we get her in the nurse's office and then she runs through the school out into the town screaming because she's seeing ghosts, right? Right. And I was just glad to see that the Japanese nurse uses the same technology as the American nurse, which is um, you can lie down for a little while if you would <laughs> like. Yeah, <right. laughs> so, yeah, but then she winds up in this train station and she sees the suicide reporter's ghost wandering along the tracks. Being very whiny and annoying. Right. Like if he was like that in real life, he was not a great loss to the world of Japanese journalism. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I really like this movie's concept of ghosts because this movie's concept of ghosts, spoiler, is that they're just like a minute after their own death trying to get people to pay attention to them because they're injured, which is way funnier than ghost mythology as we currently <laughs> have it, right? Just right? like, ow, owie for all eternity. You guys are all haunted. on cell phones. Why is no one calling 911? <laughs> excuse, excuse me, sir. So, so, okay, no, no, okay. Ma madam, ma madam, no, it's so just, just that for like years on end. Excuse me, one of these will stop. One of these will stop. <laughs> Just been in this Victorian mansion trying to tell someone I fell down for like a hundred years. The start of this Good Samaritan uh, story has really gone on for a while. There's going to be a Good Samaritan any moment. Yeah. Now. In the Bible, they don't tell you. They make it like there was three. It was actually 3,000 people right. walked past. But the 3,000 and first, that's the one. But of course, she's the only one who can actually hear the reporter ghost. So he grabs her and he pulls her onto the tracks just as a train is coming. <gasps> and then suddenly we're in a court where Kanemoto, the, the reporter, the ghost reporter, is being asked by a, a tribunal of judges to justify his suicide. Yeah, and I was like, okay, what a weird, like, fictional thing to invent. Like, a three-judge court seems <laughs> insane to me. And then I Googled it, and of course, this is how Japanese courts yeah, actually work. Actually but then I stopped Googling because I didn't want to learn more information. And so now I'm picturing just two judges being like, no, that objection stands. And the third guy being like, doesn't stand in this corner of the courtroom. <laughs> you guys are fucking stupid. He'd be the new guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Kanemoto is, is having a weird, like atheist grandstanding speech, which like, I, you know, I'm all for, I do it on a weekly basis, but weird to do like in a court of the afterlife. Right. Yes. Yeah. Also, we find out that the reason he committed suicide was because, a politician lied to him. And I'm guessing if that made him commit suicide, he can't have been doing that job very long. <laughs> like, was this his first, right. first day? And he says, you know, it took everything from me. It took everything. It took my reputation. It took my name as a news reporter. It's like, dude, your death announcement literally opened with the fact that you cracked a really big case. It did. You're still yeah. a pretty well-known reporter here. Right. 
Yeah, but he's like, I don't believe in an afterlife. And then one of the judges that is like, well, then where is this scene even happening? And he's like, oh, fuck, got me. You got <laughs> me. I am checkmated. Yeah, I wanted him to be like, actually, we're just drawings in a cult movie. And the judge is like, oh, no, okay. God damn it. Uh, you know what? If we're, if we're going to swoosh doodly doos, I guess that's fair. You could do that. <laughs> But the judges are like, I can't believe it. A materialist, even now in the era of the Buddha's rebirth, pin in that. And then they sentence him to the consequences of wasting his life, which begins by being sucked into a gay portal, I guess. Right. So it, it does. But they do say to him, like, well, now you're in the afterlife. You've got to believe in God. It's like, OK, that's a really good point. But equally, don't worry about believing God unless and until you're in an afterlife courtroom. That right. is the moment yeah, to start go. believing. That's good advice to take away from it. <laughs> yeah, it, it shows the straw man of the atheist that they think we would end up in an afterlife in front of a supernatural court and being like, I don't know, guys, have you read Letter to a Christian Nation? It makes some really <laughs> compelling right. points. Right. Oh, he also He's also annoyed that he hasn't got access to a lawyer. It's like he wants access to a lawyer in limbo. And I just wanted the judges to be like, yeah, no, the, the lawyers don't tend to stay here too long. They tend to get, uh, <laughs> they get filed pretty quickly, if you know they what get, I mean. Uh, sucked through the gay portal. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted him to get some terrible public defender, like some angel who doesn't have his wings yet. Sorry. Um, you're like my 745th millionth case today. Um, <laughs> yeah, other guy uh, who handled over uh, Alex Jones's uh, yeah, cell right, phone right, two right, years yeah. ago. That's who gets, yeah. <laughs> So, but but just then we're sucked out of the courtroom because some dude pulled Sayako out of the way of the train. Now, I'll go ahead and let you, the listener, know that this is actually her college age ex boyfriend that just happened to be at that same train station. The movie's going to confuse the shit out of us, thinking that they just met in this moment for a few minutes afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very confusing. Also, the boyfriend will be mysterious and you're always thinking like the movie is going to explain that he has psychic powers too or he was informed of some kind of destiny, which is why he knows the things he knows and is the places he is. I'm going to let you down right now. Easy. The movie never explains any of that. He is just, I don't know where the plot goes, the character. Yep. Yeah, to the point where he keeps apologizing for not having told later. We'll find out he's part of TSI. And he keeps apologizing for not having told her about TSI. And I probably should have told you about TSI earlier. We never find out what TSI stands nope. for at nope. any point. He never <laughs> tells us what it is. It's the good guy cult, but he never tells us that. Yeah, yeah. the movie never explicitly states it. So, yeah, so they're having coffee together afterwards and of like they're having like, thank you for saving me from dying in a train station coffee. And she's like, I know this is going to sound weird, but I saw the ghost of that suicidal reporter wandering around. He's like, actually, you know what? I know a shockingly large amount about train ghosts. Let me draw you a diagram. <laughs> he has a diagram of the afterlife. Yep. He, he draws it on a napkin for her with the pen he has. Now, I will say, to his credit, right, and the movie makes fun of this, but I, I do want to point this out. It is the worst drawing representation of reincarnation mm. I have ever seen. There are like nine arrows all pointing in various <laughs> directions. Yeah. A human form, 16 labels. And the human form isn't that human. It looks more no. like a gingerbread man than a human. Like right. a gingerbread man that you let the kids make. Yeah, exactly. Right, you know, without a cut. A board game meeple, if you will. Yes. Yeah, and it, <laughs> it looks like he's trying to explain the reincarnation of gingerbread men die. Like, look, when gingerbread men die, <laughs> some of their, like, ice decorations live on and they get reused on another gingerbread man or something. That's what I thought was going on there. So, yeah, but he's like, don't worry, I'm really kind of an expert in this. I can help you face down your your train ghosts. And she's like, I don't need your help. It's just act one. And so she storms away. Mm -hmm. And and also she very dramatically makes him think she throws the reincarnation napkin away, but she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't. And also we introduce as she's walking away from the scene, we introduce the fact that her little brother follows her around and takes pictures of her because he wants to be a reporter too. that rap scallion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that evening we've got her at home. She's watching the news. People sure are seeing a lot of UFOs on the news. And then the news suddenly says like, and we're also going to welcome for an interview now, the man many are calling the Buddha of the 21st century, Mr. Arai. Okay, I just want to get out ahead of this right now. Okay, if you're a cult leader and the whole prospect 
of your cult is I'm a guy who says I'm the reborn Buddha. Why would you make a movie where a guy who says he's the reborn Buddha is the bad guy, right? I know mm. they eventually come in and he's like, no, I'm actually the reborn Buddha. But you just wouldn't make that a villain category at all, right. wouldn't you? <laughs> you wouldn't think. Well, so here's the thing. Okay, normally when in a movie, if you're introduced to a character that says he's the rebirth of the Buddha and has two million followers and all this stuff, you know you're dealing with the bad guy in the movie. With Happy Science Cult, I was like, all right, let's see how this plays out. He is the bad guy <laughs> of the movie. There's a different cult leader who also says he's the reincarnation of the Buddha, who is, who's the good guy. We will meet him yeah. later. Yeah, but he's the real one. Yeah. This movie isn't about don't trust people who say they're Buddha. It's about trusting the right guy. Yes, <laughs> right. Also, these movies are fairly well drawn as far as like animes go, but I don't know who they, I think they hired like a bicep drawing guy to draw a rise face. He was like, <laughs> yeah. come on guys, give me my first chance to draw a character's face. And, uh, and this is what we ended up with. He also seems to be like twice the size of everybody else on screen. Like the interviewers mm -hmm. seem like tiny, tiny people compared to him as well. So they've got all of the perspectives wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So they're interviewing him and he's talking about how it's important to rely only on yourself and be very, very mean to others. And just then there's an earthquake all over Japan. And a light, like a lighting fixture in the studio falls. It's about to crush the interviewer to death. But Mr. Arai, the bad guy cult leader, uses his telekinesis to stop it from falling. Yes. Yes, he does. And the thing is, at this point, I assumed the guy saying he was Buddha was like meant to be Ryo Akawa, the person who runs yeah. Happy Science. So I thought, okay, but Ryo Akawa, if you went on live TV and levitated heavy equipment, you would have convinced more people. Instead, yep. you went on self-produced DVDs and gave 10-hour lectures in a monotone. <laughs> That's a very different feel. People aren't going to be persuaded by this. But this wasn't him. This was a different guy. No, no, this is bad guy power. Right. And if you're wondering, okay, is the rest of the movie about the guy who just demonstrated psychic telekinetic powers on TV? No, very little of Japan will be converted to his cause by his <laughs> obvious demonstration of telekinesis. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you would have thought that would have more impact, but... I guess in this world, atheists stand in the court of the afterlife going, I'm not convinced. I don't know. So who knows? <laughs> Being held at arm's length by God trying to kick him in the stomach. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> but of course, Sayako is watching all of this on TV at home and realizes that Mr. Arai can also see the smoke demons that she can see. So the, the next day at school, she's with her like report, like a school newspaper group, and they decide that they should send someone out to interview you know, the guy who did telekinesis on live television, I'm sure he's got slots open for high school newspapers, right? <laughs> <laughs> also, like, let's go and interview this wild cult for the school newspaper. I'm sure nobody in charge will stop us doing that. Yes. Amazing. Like, as if they're, they're going to let the kids go and see this cult. It's mad. I mean, to be fair, they did. Yep. They did. They, <laughs> sure did. they did. absolutely yeah. did do that. That's true. Yeah. Sayako uh, uh, volunteers for it. She wants to know more about these smoke demons. So she goes for the interview and as she's waiting, you know, for time to go in, she gets a message from Yuki. That's the the ex-boyfriend character that says, hey, whatever you do, don't go to that cult where the guy did the telekinesis. That'll be very dangerous. And she messages back, fuck off. I'm going to go to the cult where the guy did the telekinesis. Right. And hey, podcast listener, I don't want you to get excited that this will be a dangerous situation in any way, shape or form. He's just not the real Buddha. Yep. So, yeah, don't. Don't get yourself worked up. Yeah, the danger is she's going to be bored by a lecture. That is the, the stakes that we've currently got going on. Don't go in there. He's super boring. Right. Well, yeah, and that's what happens, right? She goes in for the interview and they're like, oh, great timing. He just started a lecture. And she's like, at the time we scheduled for an interview, how nice of him. But right. I never even thought of that. But yeah, what a dick move. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So she goes in to watch his lecture. He's got a full house and his he's like the bad guy, right? So his entire lecture is, in order to be strong, the ends always justify the means. Weakness is a sin. You know, just like that for like three minutes. Right. I really hope the entire audience thought they were getting an interview with him. He was just on TV. <laughs> All those people are like, hey, can we chat? He's like, yeah, could I? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Could, could we do it at like 3 p.m.? Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. But 
here's the great thing about this guy's quote unquote evil lecture, as we'll talk about later in the movie. And I think we might have even teased it already. The eventual good guy's wisdom is going to be nonsense palaver. So when they have to do bad guy palaver, it's an even worse version of nonsense yes. palaver, right? Yes. He has to be like, you can kick a puppy if it's in your way. <laughs> <laughs> And he doesn't demonstrate telekinesis. Mm, Imagine no. going to a telekinetic guy's lecture and he's just like, you know, it's like Spock always said. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the one guy getting kicked out of that lecture being like, move shit with your head. Yeah. Well, no, you're throwing stuff at him to see if he can actually deflect it. Yeah. You wouldn't be the only one because Shunta does that, right? The little brother has been following his sister around to get like the scoop or whatever. So he said this lecture. He listens to like three minutes of this. And he's like, yeah, he's not moving any shit with his mind. Fuck this. He yells boo and leaves. Yeah, the kid is great. The kid is absolutely great. Also, the kid cannot enter into any room without sliding like Tom Cruise from Risky Business, yeah. which is also a lovely energy. Right, right. So yeah, so he leaves and on his way out of the building, Yuki is coming in. Right. And he's like, oh, you must be Sayako's little brother. Is she in there? And he's like, yes. So Yuki goes to go in and the guards are like, no, you can't go in. And he's like, why? Everybody's he's having a public fucking lecture. You're just letting everyone in. And they're like, but not you for dramatic reasons. <laughs> because we were menacing, menacing, menacing. Yeah. But he pushes his way in anyway. And he grabs Sayako. And he's like, we've got to get out of here. So they go to run. The security stops. Him, and Yuki says, Oh, you don't want to mess with me. There are TSI members waiting outside. And everybody's like, oh, TSI members. Oh, that's oh, right, 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 right. Everybody very, says very TSI. TSI, 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 TSI. TS <laughs> motherfucking eyes. I mean, yes. Everybody seems to know what TSI is. We will never find out nope. what TSI is. Nope. We will never even learn what those initials stand for. But just then, Shunta accidentally knocks over a fire extinguisher, which is a secret Batman smoke bomb in Japan. Apparently. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Marsh, keep that in mind for QED. If there are moments where I'm, you know, perhaps not on stage and I want to be, I just, I, I will be sitting <laughs> next to a fire extinguisher at all points. Yeah, the fire safety equipment in QED does not need your permission to go off, Eli. It goes off by itself. <laughs> That's true. It turns out. That's true. That's what happens. I mean, why am I even going if not to pull fire away? <laughs> so yeah, so they, but they run away, they get away. And Yuki explains that that guy isn't the real reincarnated Buddha. But just as he's saying that, the little brother gets attacked by a demon. Yeah. Fart ghost. Okay, so to be clear, <laughs> it's a tiny black fart cloud that flies into his neck and he dies in the fun... He's not dead, but he falls down in the funniest possible way. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. he does. He does. Yeah, so they, they take him to the, to the hospital. We cut to the hospital. Now, his dad's a doctor, the dad that we met earlier. So the dad's working on him. He has this gigantic demon tumor... On his face. Glitter. Yes. This almost, this almost is my best worst. This is the most hilariously ridiculous injury I have ever seen <laughs> committed to film in any way. It's a, it's a guy to the size of his head and it's black. Oh, it's like he tried to swallow a giant tortoise or something. Yeah, it's full yes. of ghosts. Yeah, a bowling ball. Yeah, this kid has got a <laughs> bowling ball in his throat. I wanted so bad for dad to try to drain it and just like a little bit of ghost starts leaking out just like... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah but Sayako blames herself right you know so that late that night dad's working he's studying up on demonic fucking goiters or whatever and what does it look like it, what does that look like from his perspective he's just scrolling through like different <laughs> colored swollen necks no that one's red his is more of a black color it's probably something else <laughs> right so, but but Sayako interrupts him mid googling, and she sheepishly admits that she infected Shunta with the goiter because of the face demons she exposed him to. It's my fault, Dad. I went to the wrong cult meeting. What did we say about going to the wrong cult meeting? <laughs> you well, always get the right Buddha. Okay, <laughs> right. Well, Dad, but Dad gives her this like screamy, like "We are atheists in this house, young lady." Kind of a speech and storms off. He literally says, I despise all things spiritual, followed by a thunder crack. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what, demonic goiters is just the tip of this iceberg. So we're going to pause long enough for you to catch up. But we'll be back in a few minutes with even more of The Rebirth of Buddha. And so I said, Chablis, more like old woman's pee. Oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. 
Hey guys, what's up? Oh, Penrose Hill ruined Marsh's vacation to France. Our sponsor? How so? Uh, I'll tell you how, Noah. I love First Leaf because they make it easy to get personalized wine delivered on my schedule right to my door. And since I choose the day my shipment comes, I'm never stressing about missing a delivery. And every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Well, how did that ruin your vacation to France? Because going to all those wineries lost its charm. Like, sure, I think to myself as I sipped a delicious Merlot, this is good, but is this winery going to match award-winning bottles to my tastes just so I get just right wines in every shipment? No, they're not going to do that. And it just turned to vinegar in my mouth. It's true. Anna loved the box they sent us to try when they became a sponsor so much that we immediately became customers. They find new wines for her to try and love on her schedule. Exactly. So smelly old France just couldn't compete. Give your palate what it really wants with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash awful to sign up and you'll get your first six hand-curated bottles for just $44.95. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash awful. Tryfirstleaf.com slash awful. Awesome. Well, I, I'm sorry I wrecked your vacation, dude. Uh, it's okay. Just as long as we never get a cheese sponsor, I'll, I'll be fine. I think Heath's sample demands would prevent that. Oh, yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, Yuki. When I read my history book, I can see a manifestation of the pain inside of it. Please, this war is so horrible. Oh, no. Has anyone seen my husband? I lost him in the war. It's so terrible. Quick, Yumi, try this. Why, this is just paper. There's no feeling to it at all. That's right. We knew the only way to help was to give you the only book written entirely without thought or feeling of any kind. Well, what is it? It's Snooky's A Sure Thing. Ah, that tracks. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin Sayako walking into the hospital where Brother's in, seeing enough ghosts to put Haley Joel Osment to shame, right? Well, and it's amazing because, again, the ghost system in this movie is that you're just bitching about the last, like, 45 seconds of your life. Yes. So it's just chock-a-block full of people being like, I'm very sick and at the hospital. Yeah, right. Just, and th there's a ghost there who, like, jonesing for just one more surgery, just a little one, just <laughs> right. to keep me going, just to put me on. And I thought, you know, I'm not re loving this remake of Ghost, but it was a bold <laughs> choice to recast Whoopi Goldberg as a Japanese teenager, no, so I can yeah. see how it hasn't quite worked. <laughs> I, my favorite is because apparently the Happy Science Cult is against organ transplant. So there's one ghost that's just like, give me back my kidney to some organ uh, donor recipient. <laughs> They're against the weirdest things. It's They're against the weirdest things. They're against transplants. It, we already learned that being suicidal makes you an evil person. Yep. The, the very act of contemplating suicide makes you evil. They've got such weird hangups. Yeah. But just then, all the ghosts see a brilliant light shining and run away from it because they can't handle it. It's a it's Marsh doing an Australian accent <laughs> and the actress from that chick's article from before, right? Yeah, yeah. it's not the light they're running away from. It's the accent. It's like, oh, fuck, it's an Australian <laughs> guy. Get, get out of here. You don't want him to say, blimey, mate. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Blimey, cobber. <laughs> and we've gone over this a lot of times when we reviewed these movies. They hire relatively legit voice actors for these parts. Mm. Was it just like a yada, 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 I work too hard and I care too much thing in the job interview? Like, what made this? Because I've never said, like, I have an Australian accent in a professional sense, <laughs> right? There was a day where this guy came in and sat at a microphone and they were like, okay, we've got two hours in studio. You're going to be recording the Australian characters lines. And he was like, yes, here we go. And they were like, oh. Do you know what it is? I think, I think he sat down with the happy cult guys, the happy science cult guys. Most of those are Japanese. I think they said, can you do an Australian accent? And he heard Austrian. And he's like, Ooh, I can do an Australian accent. And he's like, okay, you do Australian accent now. And he's like, oh, shit. shit. Oh, crap. Gotta fake it. I, yeah. See, I thought this was like a Quentin Tarantino type situation, right? Where he was the <laughs> translator or whatever. He's like, I'll do whatever accent Ooh. I want, damn it. <laughs> it's, it's the head of the cult show you whatever his name was. Yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> Ryo In case being Buddha didn't work out for him. 
So, no, but this is, again, it's the actress that we've established several times in the movie. Sayako idolizes this actress. She's got a spank bank amount. Like, like literally, Marsh thought this movie was going to be a lesbian romance between her yeah. and this actress, right? It's the only thing that made sense how much they'd set up, how, like, the, the amount to which uh, Sakura wants to be with this actress. It was interesting, this actress. So this, this is the only thing that made sense. But then I forgot that I was watching a happy science film. It doesn't have to make sense. It has to not make sense. Yeah, exa exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's the key. The core of it. But apparently, Mari Kumaro, that's the actress, she's a member of the good guy cult, which is TSI, which Yuki is also a member of. Yuki is the ex-boyfriend, keep up. And yeah. he has now set up a meeting between Mari Kumaro and Sayako, the, the main character. Yeah, and they introduced their cult by being like, we're members of TSI. We spread the teachings of Buddha. And I wanted to be like, so Buddhists, you're Buddhists? And they're like, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> no. You know how Jews for Jesus aren't Jews? Follow that. <laughs> Follow, come with us. Yeah, it's like that. There's also another really funny little line where they say like, oh, this is, this is the Buddha reborn. And someone says, in other words, the reincarnation of Buddha. I mean, like, in one other word. Right. That's not other words. That is one other <laughs> <Right>. word. <laughs> So, yeah, so they leave the hospital. They all go to a diner for some juice boxes, which is apparently a thing that you do in Japan, right? And they're there to warn her about the dangers of Mr. Arai and his bad guy face tumor demon cult. Yeah. And she was actually a member of the bad guy's cult. He made her a famous actress. Yes, right. But then she like Leah Ramini to him or something. Yeah, she said, like, you know, I, it was all terrible. I was mentally abused. I was made to feel worthless. I was left at my lowest ebb. And that's when I joined the right cult. I left and joined the <laughs> correct right. cult. Because that is the best time to make good decisions about who you believe for the rest yep. of your life. Yeah. Yeah. So then we so, so we cut back to Shunta at the hospital, the little brother with the, with the demonic goiter. And the actress, the Aussie, and Yuki show up there along with the good guy cult leader. This is where we're going to meet Ryuho Okawa's analog in the movie. This is Mr. Serrano, right? Oh, my God. And I put a picture of this guy in our notes just as a quick reminder. If you have not done it, you should Google happy science cult leader and then watch a little of this movie to see how he <laughs> visually represented himself. It is Bold, my friend. <laughs> right. well, it that, is. It absolutely is. Don't go with a uh, current picture, though, because he's seven months decomposed at the moment. But yeah, yeah, one of the pictures <laughs> from back when he was alive. But if you do have a current picture, <laughs> not awful movies at gmail.com. In the notes. Especially of his feet. <laughs> Are you going to update his Wikipedia page? <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make and update his Wiki feet page. Okay. There you go. So, but Mr. Serrano is there to explain that they have to remove the demonic face go goiter by removing the three poisons of greed, anger, and foolishness. Yeah. And by the way, he tries to go through them and he's like, greed, you know, fucking greed, a anger, also very self-explanatory foolishness. I got a, a good, good twist on this one. Foolishness is not believing in me. Right. Apparently. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, it's funny because I already had written in my notes at this point. It's incredible how little profundity it takes to be a cult leader these days. Little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The three poisons of the mind is going to be the best he has. And it is nerd girl. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah, so they start doing their, like, demonic exorcism of the fucking demon goiter. And I guess they convince the demon that he actually wants to join Happy Science Cult so he can get out of hell. Yeah, he's like, yeah, if you join the cult, you'd be allowed into heaven. And I really want the cult guy to be, like, lying to the demon. Like, as soon as the demon gets out, like, ah, <laughs> yeah, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> yeah, the fucking Ghostbusters break in right at that moment or something. You know, with their little guns. <laughs> So yeah, but he pulls the demon out. The demon goes into the Aussie guy and then the Aussie guy talks to him as the demon. I feel like they didn't discuss that beforehand. Like, I feel like he was just like, yes, come with me, Australian guy. And he was like, oh, cool. Am I going to help with the procedure? And he's like, <laughs> yes, mm -hmm, in sure a way. Are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to be a big part of it. Do a quick stretch of your neck, though. Just do a quick stretch just in case it turns around 360. Yeah. Yeah, but the face tumor disappears when the demon agrees to leave. And the doctor dad just can't believe it. And Mr. Serrano turns to him. He goes, 
uh, you have cancer that you're hiding from your family. And he's like, I do. And it won't impact the plot in any way at all. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Because the thing is, first of all, Serrano is just like psychically cancer reading. And, that, and even if that was true, it's a dick move to just say that in front of the guy's entire family. Right. And also... The guy hadn't told his family. He's got six months left to live, apparently. And he yes. didn't mention to his wife, I've got six months left. Not even in the sense of like, oh, what are you doing? You're booking that holiday to America next year. Um, <laughs> what's the return? Is it, get, go to booking.com. On booking.com, you can do the, can cancel right up until the day before. Let's do that. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. It's a little more expensive, but you never know. You know what? Let's wait for the travel insurance, honey. No, I just, uh... <laughs> okay. But I do want to be clear to the audience, though, that because he is magic, he has magic powers. Mm -hmm. He turns to the dad. He's like, you have cancer. And he's like, yeah, I have six months to live. And the magic guy says, remember, during hard times, you've learned something. And they never address the cancer again. He does not heal the dad. No, nope. he does not comfort the dad. No, nope. he's just like, yeah, sucks to fucking suck. But, you know, remember that uh, every cloud is a silver lining. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. <laughs> well, but even worse than that, he implies that he has cancer because he wasn't thinking happier thoughts through his life. And he's been a filthy atheist this whole time. Yes. Oh, yeah. So so they leave the hospital like, you know, proud of a job well done. Psycho chases after them and asks Mr. Serrano why she sees demons and ghosts and shit. Right? And he's like, oh, well, that is the plot of the next two thirds of the movie, actually. <laughs> well, he says, he says, you have a mission. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be clear, having made it to the end of this movie, her mission has absolutely nothing to do with her ability to see ghosts and nope. spirits and shit. It doesn't. And also, and we'll come to it, her mission is very much to be there while stuff happens. Right. Because she doesn't do anything, does she? No. no. He does. Her, yeah, right. Her mission is to, like, fucking read a letter he wrote, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so then we cut to a Japanese street fair that looks fucking amazing. Everybody's dressed up in, like, traditional Japanese garb and everything. Looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's cool. And this is uh, Yuki and Sayako. They're, they're going on a date. They were broken up, but they're rethinking it now. She brought her little brother, because he's a character. To the date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. And this is the first of, like, 16 scenes where Yuki is going to apologize for not telling her about his good guy cult earlier. Yes. Right. He's, I'm, I'm sorry for not telling you about TSI. Like, for example, what those letters mean. And I will <laughs> never, ever do that. Well, when we go on a date with Yuki, he'll probably apologize to us, Marsh, for never telling us what those <laughs> oh, mean. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the amount of specific knowledge he had, it does feel like it deserves more than a casual apology, right? Like, it wasn't just, oh, I should have told you about TSI. It's like, oh, I should have told you about TSI and also our enemy cult and also the fact that our enemy cult has a special demon fart power which will infest your brother <laughs> if you go to one of their lectures. Like, right. Because she thanks him. She thanks him for what he did. But what she means is saving me from the boring lecture, not saving her little brother's life. Yeah, right. And I've just realized, I think there's a reason he's not told them what TSI stands for. I think it, sa it stands for something incredibly silly and he's just too embarrassed. It's like, no, we're the, we're the spooky investigators. The what? <laughs> the what? Yeah, no, f forget I said anything. Sorry, we, we, um, we were originally an offshoot of the Scooby-Doo gang and I don't know how... <laughs> It was like a, a Hanna Barbera merger thing to get the animation. I, was like, I can't. Say. We were we were going to get like a. We were promised there was going to be a deal on like the History Channel or the Discovery <laughs> Channel. Right after we were going to walk around with those ESP meters, but then it fell through, and we were stuck with, yes. a, with a lot of a lot of T-shirts we couldn't ship. Yeah. <laughs> At least we aren't called Skeptic Magazine, right? I mean, I think we can all agree that if there are worse mistakes you could make in branding. I mean, we are called the Skeptics, so uh, <laughs> that is totally very different. different. Totally different. <laughs> What, the only way that we differ from Skeptic Magazine is in the name, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but of course, they're having this lovely date trying to catch goldfish when, damn it, if a bunch of UFOs don't show up to ruin their good time. <laughs> I just wrote my note, fuck yeah, happy science cult. Because I will say, a running theme of happy science cult, like some kind of, uh, you know, magical psychic lover Every time I ever start to get bored in a happy science cult movie, they're like, and then aliens attack. And I'm yes. like, oh, you know me so well. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a bunch of UFOs line up and start Independence Daying the fuck out of the city. They're running from laser beams. I feel like that's a losing effort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we've all got Independence Day as the comparator there because initially they were lining up like space invaders. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, just play. and I literally I was writing. I hope they start ha- uh, attacking horizontally at slowly increasing speed, <laughs> and then bam, they blew up the entire fucking city. I was like, okay, okay, you got me there. Movie did not see that coming. <laughs> if only the space invaders had thought of that. Yeah, and I did. Did write in my notes at this point run away from the aliens magic schoolgirl who sees evil suicide ghosts is where we are in this movie that is where <laughs> yeah. we are in this that movie. is where we are <laughs> So yeah, but Yuki saves her. He's like, stay here. I'll go back and save your brother. And and we're all like, why would that place be any safer from the laser explosions than anywhere else? It's like, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And also, why does she hold on to him for 20 further seconds staring at him just to give like the lasers a head start on the little brother, I guess? <laughs> it's like, wait, wait. And got like Doctor Strange in Infinity War. Like, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> now you're going to see Yeah, right, right. But yeah, so Yuki runs off to find Shunta. The lasers are coming right for her. She's about to explode. But just then, there are glittery flower petals that show up also. Mm -hmm. And they take out the UFOs. Well, they're taking out the UFOs and then they combine together and turn into a giant lotus flower. Lotus flower? Yes. Yes. All the UFOs first come together into a mothership and then the petal angel glitter sort of things turn that UFO demon mothership into a giant lotus flower. It's very hard to describe this. It's very, very difficult. To do. Like I would, you know, you get the um, the subtitles for like the visually impaired, or like the, the, sorry, the audio description for the visually impaired. I don't want to be the guy who has that <laughs> job on this movie. <laughs> All right, let me light another cigarette. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd need three of them talking at once just to cover all the stuff that's going right. on in real time. <laughs> right. Well, and, and of course, as this is all happening, Sayako is pointing to all of it. So everybody around her starts saying, oh, look, that young girl is fighting the UFOs with her magical lotus petals. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, no, obviously. <laughs> right. And that that's all started by an old guy who shouts at first. That girl's fighting the UFOs. But I think it's just that that old guy recognized he looks so much like an alien. He just wants to get it down on the record <laughs> which side that he's on. I'm, just I'm not clear. with those guys. I'm a different yeah. alien. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to be fair, when he says that, when all the people start saying that, she's like, did I do that? And the movie's like, I, I we genuinely don't know. Did you do that? <laughs> <Because> yeah, right. <laughs> We we all thought you had ghost seeing powers, and apparently mm. now you have pedal based laser powers. Can you just sort of cohese slightly as a character, or or does she? Right, because then we cut to Mister Serrano in a tower nearby, like meditating. Like, so did he do it, or did she do it? And he's not doing enough to make it look like he's the one who did it. So I thought, uh, is he watching her doing it? Or is he doing it and giving her credit? Like, what? why would this movie not make that clear? Right. Is, I have no idea why they wouldn't clarify that for us. Fucking baffling. Imagine being the person who wrote the first draft of this script. Like, you've written this <laughs> and you've got to show it to other human beings. And you're going to be like, okay, I know there's parts of it that, that don't work and don't hang together well, but hear me out. There's some ideas in here. And they go like, yes, that's yes, all Yes, exactly it, first draft that. Done. And now in no changes. <laughs> yeah, it's divinely inspired. Or, or they've got a writer's room, but the writers weren't talking to each other over Zoom and they each did a scene. And they're like, okay, so I'm just showing you the kind of thing that I can do. And they're like, okay, this works, done. It all, it all comes together. Or maybe the writers just communicate as well as the people doing the dubbing and the subtitles communicate. It could be that as well. <laughs> sure, yeah. All right, so the next day, the government is having... I don't, I don't know what's fucking happening. Honestly, I'm having a cigarette with the guy doing the fucking visually impaired stuff, right? It, <laughs> it's a TV show, but it's also a government panel that has decisive powers to do shit. But they've assembled this panel of people to talk about the UFO attack and decide what they're going to do as a government. And that panel do not know what's going on. They've, they've convened a panel of people who have no idea what's going on. No. That is what they've got here. No, they've got uh, one of Mr. Arise lackeys. They've got a couple of experts insisting it's a hallucinogen. They've got a fucking Native American medicine woman 
there who shouts objection like she's in a court yes room, which is yep. what's you going on mm -hmm. i also i really like how the representative of the evil buddha guy is taking credit for thwarting the alien attack and it's ah so that's where mysterio got his plot from far from home from oh he got it from this yeah it all exactly. makes sense. obviously yeah no of course ripped yeah. it off also we should just point out that the native american lady and this is pretty common in anime an incredibly problematic oh, representation yes. of Native American oh, yeah, people. Yes. It is, it is not good. It is. It, I'll say, if you printed this out and put it somewhere, like a grown up would have a talk with you about it, and you couldn't <laughs> go back there. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, Mr. Arai's lackey is like, yeah, well, actually, Mr. Arai defeated the, it was him that did the lotus flower things. And the news lady is like, actually, according to the internet, it was this girl that we see here in this kimono who fought the UFOs. Right. And so this is the thing, like they've convened a panel of experts and then they're reading to them uninformed audience comments. So, okay, <laughs> right. they got this bit of TV news right. The, the, the movie yeah, got this right about TV no, that's news. Fair. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. But they're like, yeah, though the whole internet says it was this girl and we got a fax also about why the they fuck do, did they right. bring that up? And they've got proof that like a girl in a kimono warded off the alien attack and we have proof that a girl has worn a kimono. That's what you've got proof <laughs> right. of, that, that, that there is a girl in a kimono. Yes. And the picture of her in the kimono it isn't very, it's, they've blurred her face to protect her anonymity, but it's not very well blurred. But to be fair, special effects people in Japan aren't used to blurring people's faces. Right. I was going to say, their, their, time. their <laughs> industry of blurring is, they are really allowed to half ass it because no, they, they are, are yes. needed <laughs> in some areas and not. <laughs> well, and, and, in so, and in the movie, they even have to acknowledge that, right? Because they're like, here's the girl who uh, saved us from the UFOs. We've blurred her face to blur her identity. And we're like, well, you didn't blur it very much. And then we cut to her friends at school going, hey, Sayako, that's obviously you. Yes. <laughs> And her friends are so enthusiastic and supportive. And I wrote, Eli, if I ever ward off into planetary aliens while wearing my nicest kimono, I want you to be this supportive. <laughs> this Absolutely. much of a cheer squad right. for me. Yes. I say if, when. I, can, I don't promise much on this show, Marsh, but absolutely. With my whole heart. I mean, you'll probably grant yourself as interplanetary alien fighter <laughs> offer, so I don't know I don't know if you need me to do it. But. I'm giving that award to somebody else this year. Stop Maybe. going on about it. It's we'll going see. to someone we else. A, we don't know who won we yet. Find out. We don't we know. Find out. So, okay. I'm coming to keep you honest. That's why I'm coming in person. <laughs> so I can stand up and object if once again... <laughs> So, okay, so the next day, Sayako shows up late to meet Yukio for fucking cult church. Right. And she's dressed as like a 1960s it girl. <laughs> or or if you if you pick the steam train driver character in an arcade fighting game, but like your friend also picked them and she's in the alt costume. Right. Yes, exactly. I have her down as World War One gunner. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sexy World War One gunner is what they're going for here. They, she, and he says, why are you dressed like that? She's like, well, you know, everybody in the media wants to interview me because of the alien fighting and the improper face blurring. And he's like, oh, right on. Well, let's go into this church full of, you know, hundreds of people and shit. I'm sure that won't cause a problem in here. <laughs> and I just have to point out how fucking hilariously similar the bad cult and the good cult are. Keep in mind, they drew this movie. They weren't even confined by reality, nope. right? And yet the bad cult and the good cult are differentiated only by which guy who says he's Buddha is standing at the podium. Right. Yes. Like They could switch the scenes out and nobody would notice. If you just switch those scenes around, they'd be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. He's the good guy now. Yeah. Oh, and we get six minutes of just mm. Pablum. I like I sat there cleaning <laughs> resin out of my bowl the whole time. It was so funny. It, it was like it was the the most verbose possible way of saying live, laugh, love is what it was. Yes. Like I feel like if I'd have skipped this scene and then you asked me to like give a book report presentation on it with me not having seen it. Yeah. I'd have been able to guess this verbatim. Like, you light nailed it. Is <laughs> truth, yeah. not darkness, um, <laughs> enlightenment, heart, true self, truth. You could put this scene together with the responses everyone's ever given to a direct question on Be Reasonable. So I feel like that's kind yeah. of cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. That is fair. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I've never been a woman who one of Heath's childhood friends is trying to fuck at our pajama party. <laughs> but now I know 
exactly what the experience is like. <laughs> so yeah, so so they get done with church. She really likes it. It's really fucking good. She's very excited about that. She's going home, but her brother catches her and he says, Hey, there's you know a ton of fucking reporters outside of our house all trying to get an interview with you. What are we gonna do? So she calls the actress friend, and the actress is like, Why don't you come to my network and give a press conference? There's literally, like she's hiding from report. There's 400 reporters right there. Why would she go elsewhere to give a fucking press conference? <laughs> yeah. Well, now we know she was just waiting for a big enough screen. It, it wasn't that she didn't want to give a press conference. She just didn't want to give a half-assed one. Right. You know? Right. She didn't want to make sure she could use somebody else's makeup, girl. Yeah. No fucking Four Seasons Home and Garden for her. <laughs> <laughs> also, she's told she has to. She should tell the truth about what happened. But like. What truth could she possibly tell? I watched it and I couldn't tell the truth about what happened. Right. What hope does she have? <laughs> right. I pointed at the UFOs and there were lotus flowers. Honestly, like, why don't you listen to this poor guy who did the uh, audio captions for the visually impaired? <laughs> he put us all into this <laughs> shit. <laughs> but yeah, but Yuki picks her up to drive her over there. And of course, while they're driving over there, the two of them make up and they fall in love again. Right, because he spent ages like ignoring her and nagging her and sort of bringing her down. And now she's totally into him. He is learning from this cult. He's got a lot of lessons he's picked up from how to be in a cult. Yeah, it doesn't he though. All right, well, I'll tell you what. It seems that we've more or less resolved the grooming plot line and not in the way we were hoping for. So <laughs> I need another break. Uh, but first, let me get back through the hard sell. Will this movie ever explain why or how Arai had access to an army of UFOs? Will this movie simply move on as though UFO attacks were a common occurrence in Japan? How hard can I go fuck myself? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the bafflingly protracted conclusion of The Rebirth of Buddha. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Right, and then if Mike's flight gets in at three, we can get him to the hotel in the same car as Tim. Hey, hey Marsh, how's it going? Oh, God, I'm just getting ready for QD. You know, it's such a busy time. That's true. Less than a week and you guys are selling digital tickets this year. You must have racing thoughts. Sorry, racing thoughts? Yeah, you know, just the constant worries. The feeling that you're not doing something right where you jump up in the middle of the night to check and recheck work that you've probably already done. Uh, no, 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 none of that. None of that. Um, but, it, but if you, if you were dealing with that, you might want to try better help. Better help? You mean therapy is good for racing thoughts? It sure is. If you think of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So no awkward therapist breakups? No awkward therapist breakups. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash awful. All right, Marsh, thanks. So so what do you think about in the run-up to QED? Probably about how much he wishes he could give himself skeptic of the year again, right? No, yeah, that tracks. <sighs> I hate you guys. <laughs> I can't believe we're going to meet Grandmaster Smith. I know, his wisdom is legendary. Hello to both of you. Hello, Grandmaster Smith. Is it true that Master Arai is secretly a demon? It is. But you will defeat him with the eternal truth that I shall give you now. Ah, oh, we are ready, Grandmaster. Be nice. Sorry, Gra Grandmaster? I, I know. My wisdom is as mind-blowing as it is practical. But it is important that you do so in a way that is kind and good. For your goodness and kindness shall make all that you do nice. Right. Got it. Be nice. Great start. Um, anything else? Yeah, uh, maybe something a little more obscure. Mm, I see. I think you are ready for my deepest wisdom. Yes, we are. Do not let lies prevent you from seeing the truth. The truth is that which is true, and lies are not true, not in the slightest. Seriously? Come on! What? I'm giving you guys good stuff here. No, you're not. This is like the most basic and banal good advice I've ever gotten. Yeah, it feels like you just got this from a, a poorly written fortune cookie. Ah, so you know of the cookie of destiny. God damn it. You guys, you guys want to add 
in bed at the end. That can be fun. It's fun. No. Oh. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Mr. Arise storming into a television station, ready to enact his next master plan after the UFO thing went wrong. He's got a new one. Yeah. This is a hijacking the airwaves based plan. <laughs> yeah. Now, to be clear, it appears that all it took to hijack all the televisions in Japan was to punch one guy in the stomach. Yes, at this one TV yes, station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, apparently, he's got like a Fight Club Project Mayhem thing going on. Like he's positioned henchmen in every section of society to to deliver that stomach punch at any given moment to right. anybody who needs it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he gets on the air. They're like, you know, now a message from Mister Arai, who is the rebirth of Buddha, and he gets on the air and he's like, huge fucking tsunami is going to hit Japan. <laughs> right. <laughs> So the thing is as well, right? You've got the henchman who introduces him and then he steps to the side and the evil Buddha guy is sat behind him in a big chair. And I thought, so was he sat behind him the whole time? Because now I really <laughs> want to watch their tech rehearsal where he has to figure out how close to the camera he needs to stand in order to completely obscure the guy <laughs> right. in the chair behind him. Mm -hmm. and now we can still, don't move your arm. I can see you under your armpit now. You have to keep your arms by your sides. See, now in my head, they brought the chair, right? They were like, no, it's weird for me to be standing this long. I want to sit, but like in casual, I don't want everyone to be freaked out. I want them to just know what's going on. Right, because the thing is, we're going to cut over a set in a second to a newsreader who's confirming all of this. And then when we cut back, we realize the newsreader is in the same room, the same studio. Yes. But he's at a normal news desk lit normally. And then just to his right, there's big evil chair with scary evil light, light lighting. And that makes me think, was that always the new studio? Or did they come in and do a paint job and a lighting job to the other side of the, the, the new studio and be like, yeah, don't worry about this. During the 1 p.m. news, you're like, I know we're doing some painting, but like, it's fine. It's not, you don't need to worry about this at all. Well, and all of this complex blocking is made all the more insane by the <laughs> fact that the message he's trying to deliver is that a tsunami is going to hit Japan in 10 minutes. Now, <laughs> He starts explaining at length why and how he knows this. I feel like you summarize quickly, but that's not mm. something happy science cult movies can do. And then the weather guy cuts in and he's like, oh, no, he's right. Uh, there's a there is a tsunami coming. So I guess his master plan was to fucking scoop the weatherman by two minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I feel like tsunami is not a cool plot point in Japan, right? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. I feel like they would be not... That would be like being like, there are two towers here in town yeah. that we're going <laughs> to use. Right, right. It would be like Barbenheimer, actually. But yeah. And the thing is, like, first of all, is a 10-minute warning for a tsunami right? Because like, don't tsunamis normally follow earthquakes. It feels like 10 minutes is either way too long or nowhere near long enough. But 10 minutes seems like an oddly... like They've hit the sweet spot of exactly how long it shouldn't be that you can predict a tsunami. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I get under a desk and then watch TikTok for nine minutes. It, just, it doesn't exactly. feel right. <laughs> and he says, you know, and there's a tsunami coming at 800 kilometers an hour. And I thought, oh, okay, that feels way too fast. That feels way specific. So I paused the film at this point and I checked and apparently... 800 kilometers an hour is how fast tsunamis can actually go. So uh, huh. this movie checks out. Yeah, no, 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 it's like everything, right. everything yeah, actually Happy is correct. Called. And then, of course, he, he breaks it to the people watching at home that if they want to survive the tsunami, they have to, quote, surrender your minds, end quote. Yeah. Or just climb onto the roof of your building. Oh, but either, right, because you know it's coming. Yeah, right. Well, I love we cut to like fucking Japanese Jim Cantore going like, yeah, no, actually, I think we should surrender our minds to this guy. I'm near the shore. <laughs> 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 also, isn't this where they say you need to evacuate to higher grounds? It's like, yeah, higher spiritual grounds. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. What, that's <laughs> not what he means. But then the water starts pouring into the studio. So, okay, so, so the TV studio was on the ground floor. Again, that seems a weird choice. So right? Like, you don't put that. Like that's that's <laughs> second or third level, surely. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Marsh. They will later show that it is very much not on the ground floor. No. So don't, they they also no, none, of this, none of this really adds up. Yeah. So meanwhile, Sayako, Yuki, and Shunta are showing up at a different news network, right? Because they were going in to give their their press conference. She's seeing a fuck ton of panic ghosts, right? The ghosts are like the smoke demons are entering people and making them panic about the tsunami. 
Yeah, now they're kind of Scientology thetans for some reason. Yes. <laughs> and so this is where we see the tsunami happening. And it is a massive tsunami. It is so much bigger than all of the skyscraper buildings. And I thought, okay, I'm uh, pausing this film again because, you know, any fucking excuse to pause this film and not be watching it at this point. <laughs> so, okay, well, how tall is this tsunami wave comparatively in this animation? So I was like, okay, well, that, that plaza building in the distance, that's got to be like twice the height of the building next to it. So this plaza building has 15 floors, which means the, the one next to it is at least 30 stories tall. That's like five, 600 feet. And the, the tsunami wave is so much bigger than that. That can't be true. So I Googled the height of the average tsunami. Apparently, tsunamis aren't taller than 100 feet tall. But the tallest tsunami ever recorded was in Alaska in 1958, which was 1,700 feet tall. Oh, Jesus. So it can be bigger than that building. So again, this movie checks out. This no, is yes, all perfectly plausible at this yep, point. Yep. All right. Now, Marsh, I've always had a theory that if you just dived into a tsunami, you'd be fine. Did you do any Googling to find out that if you just like ran towards <laughs> it, ride it would the pass wave? through you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank <can> you. <laughs> Point break style. Yeah. So, yeah, but the demons are possessing everybody, making them panic because you know how people really need help panicking when there's a 1700 <laughs> foot tsunami coming at them at 800 kilometers an hour. But what we're learning here is that it's there's actually no tsunami at all. This is a group hallucination based on some level of that, like what we we like we manifest things into the world by thinking about them or fearing them concept. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And the only way to survive this tsunami, like in reality, is to join the happy science cult and see through it. So yes. like basically she needs to get on TV and just like bang on about the happy science cult. So the solution to this massive catastrophic event is awareness. Like it's fucking corny 2012 like and share guys <laughs> <laughs> knowing is all the battle actually as it turns oh out. man if yukio ends up jerking off on a parked car <laughs> <laughs> i mean this is japanese anime it could well, still yeah, go yeah, there we go we're gonna find it. really good that will be tentacles i've seen that video <laughs> So yeah, they get to the network and the actress, Chick Murray, is like, yeah, you need to run to the studio and broadcast the truth quick. The goons are after you. So there's some goons after him, right? Luckily, Yuki and Mari are both karate masters now. Yeah, yep. 100%. So they fight off the bad guys. Sayuka and Shunta run off. There's still some bad guys right on their tails, but don't worry. The problematic Native American shaman lady is there to use her Native American powers she also to force push them. Has a force push, right? And they say to her, this is fucking insane. They go, why did you help us? And she goes, I don't know what's going on. And I wrote <laughs> my notes, the Diane Feinstein story. Okay, we're figuring this out. <laughs> I mean, no, because she actually did something to help. So it's not the Diane Feinstein well, right, story. Right, right. Right. <laughs> it's nothing corrupt at all about this. So meanwhile, all the Japan's losing their shit over the coming tsunami and the accompanying earthquakes and lightning. There's a giant ghost sperm shadow floating through the world that we see at length. Yeah. But then Sayako walks into the studio and they're like, she's like, I need to get on the news and say something. And they're like, that's how it works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, all of the, all of every single channel in Japan are broadcasting the same thing. There's a tsunami. It's chaos. But this newsroom is weirdly calm. Like they're totally, watching Japan get yeah. destroyed. But he, he mostly seemed annoyed that he's going to be slightly late for commercials. That's the level of energy he's bringing yeah. to it. Yeah. Right. And I want to point out, it is actually even dumber than I have a message I want to read on the news. She just says to the producer, I have a message for you from the actress lady who runs the TV show. And his answer is, read it on the air right now. Right. I was like, man, <laughs> I'm sure glad her message wasn't like, I've got super bad diarrhea today. So we need to delay <laughs> the show by 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, so they're like, oh, no, you're the girl from the kimono whose face we didn't really blur out at all. Mm. We'll put you on the air. Everybody will love to see that right in the middle of a tsunami. As far as they know, right in the middle of a fucking tsunami, we're just going to have a puff piece about the girl in the kimono. Right. This would be like if 9-11, they had just cut to a message from the I Love Turtles kid. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so the, the cameras come out. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what to say. But luckily, Serrano sprinkles into a spiritual existence in her imagination or whatever. And he like mansplains what to say to her. Yes, she's a microphone. Yes. Yeah. 
Right, so much so, just so that like no woman would have anything to say in this movie, we're hearing his voice over top of hers saying all the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. The, the big solution here is for an apparently fuckable school child, which is where we're going with this, to literally be the attractive mouthpiece for a cult leader. And she tells everyone everything, they don't listen. And so he, he then starts to talk over her. She said it all, nobody listens. So now a man is going to repeat it and they're going to think he's had a great idea. That is what's right, happening. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, but she tells everybody or he tells everybody, depending on how you look at it, that they all have to stop thinking about the tsunami. And if they meditate and live, laugh, love better, it'll go away and it won't hit Japan. So everyone does. Everyone does. Yeah. All it took was for a girl to go on live TV and say, nah, uh, yes. And people are saved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Her grand mission. It's like the COVID vaccine. All it took was someone to go on stage. <laughs> <laughs> And then a, a golden wave of happy thoughts washes over the country and saves the day. We get Arai very upset about this. We get me even more upset that there's somehow still 30 minutes left in this <laughs> fucking movie. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And Arai's version of being upset is miming, wanking off two guys into his face while making hard eye contact down the camera lens to assert dominance, apparently. That is how he's enriched. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I, I, I do it too. <laughs> By the way, for those who were checking in on Marsh's level of insanity at this point in the movie, he was at this point trying to define scientifically how the multicolored rings of light we're affecting the evil <laughs> <laughs> right. No, that's fair. <laughs> I just want to point out that in like three different occasions in the news while talking about this ostensible high school girl at the center of this movie, the newscasters are like, and this beautiful girl helped save the day. I just think that's a weird commentary to on. Yeah, absolutely. They keep emphasizing how fuckable this child is. It's so weird on live TV news. Yeah, yeah. So that we cut to Mr. Arai like screaming into his empty headquarters about how much better it could have been in a way that just screams, here comes a musical number. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I'll get you next time, Inspector Gadget. Is one yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then Satan shows up like in, in voiceover, or I don't know, the demon that possesses him shows up and goes, yeah, man, you really fucked this up. You really fucked this up. <laughs> yeah, he's talking to the disembodied voice of authority like it's the end of an episode of Mork and Mindy and he's summing <laughs> things up. Except, except at the end of an, an episode of Mork and Mindy, Mork wasn't then filled with the displaced spirits of suicide victims. Well, yeah. well j just one. Actually, oh, just Jesus one. Jesus Christ, oh, dude, come on. <laughs> too far, Marsh. Get out. Get out. That's yeah. too far here. I got off a of movie. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to make a Robin Williams suicide joke until the end of that sentence and then suddenly it was there on the page. Yeah, I, think no, no, was there. I yep. get it. Yeah. I get it. All right. So, yeah. So the, the news is obsessed with her. They're calling her the savior. We get her sneaking out of her high school, right? Like, you know, trying to stay away from the reporters when a demon sneaks up and attacks her. So we cut immediately from there to the cops telling the parents that she's gone missing. And it'd be so weird if, if it was just that she's dead. Because they said they found some of her personal effects. <laughs> like, it'd be great if she was just dead. It'd be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I really wanted them to talk about how attractive she was. And, and I can't emphasize enough that she's an attractive young woman. We will do nothing. We will stop at nothing to find her. I mean, look, if she was, you know, we probably wouldn't do it, but she's really a good looking kid. So yeah, yeah we're gonna, right, gonna right. give it her all. Now, so, so Shunta, by the way, the little brother, he's watching baseball on TV. That's going to matter in a second. Meanwhile, we get Serrano and the Aussie and Mari all talking about how, well, this is obviously you know, Mr. Arai's work, this is the bad guy thing. And we're like, well, fucking duh, right? Yeah, they explained that because she has stopped two evil plans now, if people purify their minds, less people will go to hell and the devils will lose their place to live. Yes. And I'm just picturing like the devil putting up a GoFundMe on their Facebook. Hey, <laughs> friends, you know I never do this. Um, I mostly just inhabit people with anxiety, but it's been a terrible couple of months. I also have cash apps. <laughs> well, I was thinking it was the opposite thing. It's like, yeah, if people go to hell, if fewer people go to hell, the devils will lose their place to live. Yeah, but if more people go to hell, the area is going to start filling it with like coffee shops and brunch places right, and then right. the rents in hell are going to go up. And, yeah, yeah the, the demons can't afford it anymore. <laughs> They're damned if they do, damned if they don't, yeah. Oh my god, just a demon waiting behind me at Starbucks. Oh my god, they have oat milk. You, they, they have all the milks that they have on the website. Just order. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and then just then on the baseball game on TV, we see 
Mr. Arai rising up on the passenger version of the probe droid from Empire Strikes Back? We found it, everybody. There's the tentacles. I knew this movie was going to give us tentacles (laughs) eventually. I I think he's hijacked the floating platform M. Bison rides in the Street Fighter film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, okay, there you go. He never acknowledges that his giant floating platform has tentacles Mm -mm. in the entire film. He's just like, hello, everyone. I have an announcement. And I'm like, we're not going to talk about the platform. We're not (laughs) going to talk. This is why I need to be in the movie. Throw something, use your psychic powers, and also shout in that baseball stadium like, what the fuck's up with your platform, man? It's got tentacles. They don't seem to be functional. Are they helping it fly? <laughs> There's a reason he doesn't take questions at the end of his speech, because he yeah. knows that every single question is going to be about the tentacles. They're all going to be about the tentacles, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, I, uh, we have a big announcement. He's got Sayako with him. He's like, I, Say- Sayako, the beautiful high school girl that all of your newscasters keep talking about how fuckable she is. She's with me, and she's going to tell all of you who the real reincarnation of the Buddha is. Right. And then he turns to her and he's like, tell him it's me or I'm going to blow everybody up. I feel like you have yeah. this conversation backstage, Mr. O'Reilly. This is very <laughs> amateur. Yeah. His plan is for her to say under very, very obvious duress and threat of death that he's a super good guy in front of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can see the threat. Well, he's riding a black vehicle with tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> You're working against yourself here, man. You're outsmarting yourself, Mr. Arai. Yeah. And so just then Yuki and Mari and the cops all show up and they yell at him, let her go and stop insulting the name of the Buddha. Yeah, let, let her go. And also like secondary request, more of a side request, if anything, stop bad mouthing Buddha. But like it's, it's the let her go mostly is what I'm here to say. Right. So, yeah, so he's she's like, the real Buddha is... The real Buddha is... And then she flashes back to the entire movie because... The entire movie? I was impressed. Yeah. Because we we get a lot of flashbacks in the Happy Science Cult films, but she does the whole thing. I thought For a second, I thought I had hit, like, play from beginning on YouTube. Yeah. It's like when you show up late into a football game on Amazon or whatever, and it's like, do you want to summarize all the important plays? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, please. (laughs) No, no, please, thank you. Yeah, but the way she goes on about like the real Buddha is she slow rolls it like she's going to reveal that the real Buddha is the winner of X Factor this year. <laughs> and she's just like <laughs> winding up the tension. Trying to open up the envelope. Yeah, yeah Turns exactly. out to be Rudy Giuliani in a costume. Ken Jeong walks <laughs> off stat. <laughs> but she goes, the real Buddha is Serrano, who no one in the stadium would have ever heard of. And Arai gets so mad that he knocks her over with his demon kinesis. Luckily, Yuki catches her, so her 300-foot fall is not really problematic. It's, yeah, it's fine because he catches her, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he runs and he <laughs> catches her from a 300-foot fall, which is like a third of a tsunami's height, and he still manages <laughs> to catch her. Yeah, no, but she's fine. Well, no, she's not, actually. Her spirit has been taken out of her body by the demon Kinesis. Right. Right. He, he holds it up like he stole her Barbie, right? I mean, her soul, but he's just like, oh, uh, 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 still got it. And he's also like trying to keep the crowd here, which I love. Yes. He's like, hey, everybody. Um, what she meant to say. Sorry, she said the other guy. Um, <laughs> please ignore the very obvious demon tentacle craft. I said hands down, not taking questions about the tentacle craft. <laughs> well, and he goes like, I'm the Buddha is what she meant to say. And then everyone, we hear all the people in the crowd going, well, maybe he is the Buddha. Actually, it would make a lot of sense if he was the Buddha. Why would Buddha have a black having a like tentacle like <laughs> <laughs> So he commands everybody to all stand up and celebrate his Buddhahood, but just then Serrano shows up to fucking God fight him. We God. have a Buddha fight. Buddha so fight! Yeah. <laughs> So how this how this fight goes? Like bad Buddha sends out some dementors from Harry Potter. A good Mm -hmm. Buddha magics a sword out of nowhere and like scythes all down. Yep. Then bad Buddha sets himself on fire, which to be honest, pretty on brand for Buddhists. So (laughs) they nail that one. (laughs) At one point, he grabs his force stick. Like I I I want to be very clear. At one point. Bad Buddha, there's just like a black shadow rod, which is yes. surprisingly fuzzed out. He squeezes it and Serrano's like, ooh And I was like, okay. <laughs> Four stick squeezing. I guess if you're the bad Buddha, that is in play. Right, right. No, yeah, he throws all his like black smoke dicks out at the crowd and then Serrano makes these 
comically oversized wings appear to protect everybody. The size baseball of the baseball stadium. Baseball yes. 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 It's so silly. I wanted him to have him on for the rest of the movie. Like, he's just dragging him. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. These are like, <laughs> like 750. There's like half a, half a fucking tsunami. <laughs> Won't you manifest these motherfuckers? They- <laughs> <laughs> and then bad, then Evil Butter turns into like a 30 foot high samurai vampire mm-hmm. with absolutely fierce mascara, which yes. is an interesting choice. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. But and you know Serrano's kicking the the samurai demon's ass, but the samurai demon's like, ah, 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 I still have Sayako's soul, and she's your disciple, so you have to do what I say, right? And then just when this movie should just fucking end, it doesn't. Instead, we get like Serrano flashing back to all his previous lives in the bullshit made up Atlantis land that Happy mm. Science Cult has. Yeah. Which include clips from two of the movies we've already yes. watched. Yeah, yes. actually they do. My notes say, oh, we see him as like good Buddha in ancient Egypt under a tree. Holy fuck, I think these are scenes from a movie you guys made me watch. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I recognize they them. Are. It sucks to be part of this cinematic universe. Can I say? <laughs> it right? sucks. It sucks to know these things. Yeah, this is worse uh. than the DC universe by a distance. <laughs> it's like when you're talking to someone and they suddenly know a lot about methadone and you have to be like real chill about it. That's how I felt (laughs) knowing that I recognized a bunch of the movies. So yeah, so like Serrano goes on more bullshit spirit monologue nonsense. The stadium is wrapped, right? That's the fantasy of this movie. 50,000 people all listening to this bullshit without yawning or whatever. Noah, if you were at a baseball game and a 30-foot samurai vampire in fierce makeup was fighting a Buddha with wings the side of a baseball stadium, you'd listen to what they're saying. No, that's, you no, definitely that's, would pay attention. Yep, no, that's better than most <laughs> baseball games, I will admit. Yeah, most interesting thing. And then a fucking a white elephant comes stomping into the scene <laughs> With, with mm. Barry, by the way, please tell me that's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man vibe as he comes. For sure. <laughs> right, yes. So he's so Good Buddha is stood on top of an elephant that is three times his size, but then they are both outlined by the figure of a man twice the size of that. Yes. Who draws a pentagram in the air that kills bad Buddha. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is both crazier than that sounds and also way less interesting than that sounds. <laughs> I feel like they're going to have a company rap meeting where the elephant's going to be like, hey man, when I um show up, you don't just stand on me to do spells, okay? I need to be <laughs> tusking some people or like a little stompy kick thing because that was, I'm not a chair, Craig, okay? I'm not a chair. I'm a giant. I am some percentage of a tsunami and I deserve the respect and love that you gave giant Shadow Lamu. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. So, but then he, I guess he pentagrams the demon to death Mr. Arai is like waking up from his stupor and Serrano lectures him for being such a bad Buddha. Feels like a weird moment, right? Feels like a weird moment to be like, it was bad of you to be filled with demons. It's like, we all get it, man. We get it. You yeah. and you killed the demon. You stood on a giant elephant with Lamu behind you. I feel like we're past the like, whether or not, the, who was in the right and who was in the wrong conversation. <laughs> uh-huh. I just really wanted the the, the the crowd in the baseball team to get bored by this, as bored by this monologue than this conversation as I am and just start like booing or yeah. the announcer hit that like, take me to the ball game song in the background. <laughs> just, oh, just to drown this out. <laughs> Sorry, I need to grind our entire podcast yes, to a halt. Yes, we... Marsh, yeah. do you think that the lyrics to take me out to the ball game are take me Ah, to the ball game. Uh, no, I did think that. Yes, yeah. I did <laughs> think that that until is about what he spelled moment. out. Yeah, yeah. This is. I'm glad you're white because this is a cultural exchange that never f- fails to fascinate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but Arai realizes that Serrano is obviously the real Buddha because of the elephant and everything. So he switches to the good guy cult. Meanwhile, though, Sayako is still spiritlessly laying in between all the other named characters. So Yuki has to use his scream gold light halo powers to enter into her death state and love her back to life. Yeah. Yes. But it's like a you just had a big fight and you're telling someone you love them moment. It's not Mm -hmm. like a Yukio, I have always loved you. And with my whole heart, they're just sort of hanging out in zero gravity where he's being like, 
I mean, I guess if having labels is important to you, then <laughs> between us, whatever. But I, I just think externally, whatever labels you want to maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. <laughs> and, and the thing is, they're in zero gravity because she's lying like horizontally and he stood at her head, like stood up holding her head. And it just makes him look like he's the absolute master of light as a feather, stiff as a board. Right. I don't need all those other guys. I can just stand at your head. Okay. When you were talking about the angles and the zero gravity, I had a very different plan in mind. But you know, I like your plan better, Mark. Hey, stiff as a board, mate. Stiff as a board. <laughs> now we know how she stay. It's the ultimate magic trick. We're giving away the secrets. <laughs> So he kisses her and a great big light shines and she comes back to life. And that's where we get my best worst suddenly. Cause this was made in, I think this was made in 2009 or whatever. And we get these CGI angels. Everything else has been like drawn in animation. Right. But so now that we get these CGI angels that would have been disappointing if you'd seen them in like a fucking toothpaste commercial in 1998. <laughs> right. <laughs> These things, to, like my only possible note at this point is, and then nonsense. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is Final Fantasy, end of a Final Fantasy game levels of like, okay, yeah. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> so there's also there's a moment where like, because Mr. Serrano's like taking us out with all his great fucking pablum again. There's a moment where he says the exact same line twice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And nobody acknowledges it. <laughs> Like yep. the record skipped or something. It's really disoriented. It's like the voice actor did like a second take on the line because he flubbed it the first time. But it's like, we're still right. rolling. I'll just keep going. Yeah. And they left that in. That's all I can think has happened here. They That's were like, exactly look, we didn't make any happened. cuts for the guy who did the Australian voices. We're not making any cuts for you. <laughs> I also, I just have to point this out that he also promises to build Buddha land together. Yes. <laughs> yes. And if you're not picturing like a defunct Buddhist version of Dollywood, you are not the woman I married. Fuck, yes. <laughs> Just kids riding around in a like fucking little slow moving train thing. It's like the points to start back at the beginning. I know. Uh, right, I yeah. know. The roller coasters just completely flat and very <laughs> slow. Yeah. So yeah. And then there's another fucking scene somehow, right? We get the Aussie guy. You guys were all wondering how his story wrapped up, right? But does he get to the airport okay now? <laughs> <laughs> so he, we get to, we cut to him at the airport. He's leaving to tell Australia all about the Buddha. And I'm like, you know, they have TVs there too in Australia. <laughs> it's like a seven, a six or a seven hour flight from where they are right now. It's not like he, because he talks about like, I'm from down under. I'm all the way in Australia. It's like, it's like me going to the other side of Europe. It's not that far. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are Japanese people. There are lots of Japanese people in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, but so, and we also, we learned that Sayako can still see spirit light and demon smoke, but she's learned to control it now, as though any of that mattered at any point in the fucking movie. And then they all laugh like it's the end of a fucking Scooby Doo cartoon. Freeze frame style, yes. Yeah. And then we get the credits, which, like, is my cue to turn them off, but Marsh watched this before. I didn't had already written all these fucking notes and I'm like, oh, God damn it. Now I have to watch fucking the fucking Marsh. credits too. Oh my, this is the reminding the teacher we have homework of God awful movie class. <laughs> just so you know, so, just so you know. It was a six minute credit song. <laughs> it was. And, oh God, it's like, look up at the sky. We can see the sky <laughs> and the singer is so they're out of tune but in a really disinterested way and it, it's very much like Eli vamping a song as part of shenanigans the live show right, it's got yeah, that yes. energy the, <laughs> yeah. the intonation is all out in weird ways it's like there is one and only one sun in the sky there is only one Buddha <laughs> He is the only one on this earth. Yeah. Okay. And listeners at home, listeners at home, nobody break it to Marsh that all animes end that way. I don't yeah. think he can take it. I don't think he can take it. I swear, if I catch any of you sending him the end of Full Metal Alchemist and telling him that's how it ended and it's one of the best ones we have, blacklisted, darn it. But that is the end. I guess that's going to do it for our review oh, of the rebirth of Buddha. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get you all fired up for the next one. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, I'll be at QED next week. So we've got something atemporally special for you. We'll be watching Born Into Mafia 2. Oh, Heath on a get ahead. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Oh, speaking of QED, the best conference in skepticism coming up on September 23rd and 24th in beautiful Manchester, England. Are there still tickets available? And if so, where would one go to acquire them? 
there are there are like half a dozen tickets. There's very few tickets left <laughs> at this point, but people should go to qedcon.org forward slash tickets. You can buy your in-person tickets if it is too soon to, I mean, it's next week. If it's too close to the event for you to fly all the way to Manchester, you can watch it from the comfort of your very own home for like $50. It's £39 for an online streaming ticket, which will get you access to at least the main stage of QED. Maybe a little bit more. We're going to see what we can do. So yeah, people should definitely go to qedcon.org forward slash tickets. You can get your streaming ticket there. You can watch all the material we're going to be broadcasting on YouTube for like two weeks up until two weeks after the event. So yeah, definitely, definitely do that. It's going to be such a huge amount of fun. And you're going to want to watch because I am going to be doing some stuff on that main stage. Let me tell you, <laughs> I will. I don't think you're going to do stuff. Interrupt All right. some things. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 422 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. I'm just playing through it. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star <laughs> review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you've enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Need, and D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slot and on Mars. All the other the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Ryu Akawa died seven months ago, which means he's only two months from coming back to lead the Happy Science Cult as a baby. Oh, well, there you go. Akawa's demise led to a serious internal discussion about a direct sequel to this one called The Redeath of Buddha. Eli's knowledge of Happy Science Cult Cinematic Universe started to rival his Christian movie knowledge, and he thought long and hard about his life choices. Didn't he, though? <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.